Hello everyone. The birds are back in town. Where are they? Who's here? Who's not? Where did they come from? Where did they go? And how do we know? Join us as we investigate migrating birds in Vermont and how you can help scientists track their movements and changing patterns on this week's Citizen Science Challenge. from the Echo Leahy Center for Lake Champlain and welcome to this week's Citizen Science Challenge. In case you haven't noticed, spring has arrived and you may have noticed you have some more guests in your neighborhood, like the birds. They're not here for spring break though. They're here through a science phenomenon we call migration. So what does that mean, you ask? Well, migration is when a population is gonna move from an area that is really low in resources they need to survive and move to a location that's gonna be a little bit more abundant that allows them to ensure their survival. So what supplies am I talking about? When we think about the birds, we think <laughs> it's cold in Vermont winters. They're heading south to where it's warm. But temperature actually isn't the primary factor. Many birds can survive here in Vermont if they have the other resources they need. And it's that primary resource that is the driving force between their movements. That source is food. Spring has sprung. Buds are popping out, flowers are coming up, the insects are coming out. And so now there is that food supply for those birds to eat so they can spread out and share that resource. The other reason, it's nesting season. So they also wanna spread out and have that space for those nesting locations, nesting materials, and then that space and that abundant food supply to help their young grow. So there are two primary reasons that we're seeing those birds, that food supply and the nesting locations that they're now afforded now that the snow has disappeared. So we know now that birds are coming back up to Vermont and they have the resources they need to survive. But now the question is, who's here and who's not? There's birds that you see in your backyard year round, maybe something like a black capped chickadee or a rock dove. But if you head out of your backyard, you may see some more species than what you see in your backyard. And what are those species and where are you gonna find them? Well, that depends on a lot of factors. First off is what is the distance that bird is migrating? Some birds are short distance migrants. They might stay in Vermont, but they're just changing their habitat based on their needs for the season and then coming back in the spring. Others might be medium distance migrants, meaning they haven't left New England, but they're not in Vermont anymore either. They may have only migrated a few states. And then there are those long distance migrants we think about, the ones that have completely left Vermont and Canada and headed down to Central and South America. Also, the latitude of Vermont is the perfect location so that we are caught in the middle of many different migrations. Some birds come down from the subarctic and arctic tundra to spend their winters here in Vermont. They are now getting ready to head back up to their northern breeding ground. So things like snow buntings are getting ready to be on the move and snowy owls are heading back up as well. Other birds though are coming to Vermont but they're not planning on staying. We're just a rest stop for them on their way back north. So snow geese are coming through and you can see them as they take a break and they're gonna start migrating out. Another one, the medium-sized falcon in North America, the merlin. They are also migrating through as they head north for their breeding grounds. And then it's not just all about large waterfowl and raptors. Songbirds are doing that as well. There's been a lot of sightings lately of fox sparrows migrating through as well. So we have species that are leaving Vermont. We have species that are using us as a resting place and then there are those birds that are actually coming back to nest and breed. Things like the red-winged blackbird or the turkey vulture. The tree swallows are gonna start coming back. The flycatchers with the insects coming out such as the Eastern Phoebe. I think I actually heard one just the other day. And then the fish-eating raptors, the osprey. They are now coming back up to Vermont as well and getting ready for the summer season. So there's a lot of different movement happening right now in Vermont depending on who's leaving who's just passing through, and who's coming to stay for the season. So, we know that the birds are migrating. We have an idea of who's going, coming, and who's stopping over. But now, how do we know all this information? Well, researchers have a couple tools at their disposal. One is the researchers who band birds. They either go into the nests of raptors, or they catch the songbirds in mist nets, and put these little bands around their legs that are color or alphanumeric coded. And if those birds get seen or captured again, 
that data can be recorded as to what individual it was and where they were seen and when. And all that data either goes into the researcher's database and then also the USGS bird banding lab. But that tends to be data that is used by the researchers, not something that you or I can easily access. Another thing is a really cool field of study called radar aeroecology. These are scientists who are studying weather radar, not for rain, ice, sleet, or snow and clouds, but for the other biological matter, i.e. the passerings or birds. They tend to migrate nocturnally or at night. So when they come up to migrate, they come up out of their day roosting sites and then take off and these weather radars can actually pick them up. So they can then see trends of large masses of birds as they move. Cornell Lab of Ornithology's BirdCast unit specifically focuses on this. And if you want to check out what's happening on the nightly migration patterns, check out birdcast.info and you can see the live migration maps. Another accessible to us resource is crowdsourcing science, citizen science, where people like you and I can record our observations and give them to scientists, telling what species of bird we saw, when we saw it, and where we saw it, and then inputting that data into a database such as eBird or iNaturalist. If you were to go to eBird and explore species or hotspots, you can see what birds are being seen where and the trends and how frequently a species might be seen. Having this massive amount of data gives scientists the tools they need to start to spot birds who are in places they shouldn't be or when trends are changing based on the seasons. So when we look at those trends on eBird and the data that it provides, one of the common questions is, is climate change affecting bird migration? And the answer hasn't been conclusive because it's only now we're starting to get the data that we can research into it. In December 2019, in Nature Climate Change Journal, a peer-reviewed article was published that looked at the entire country and migration patterns. Using that radar aeroecology, scientists looked at 24 years of weather radar data, getting rid of the snow, the sleet, the rain, the clouds, and just looking at the bird migrations at 143 weather radar stations throughout the country and compared that with the overall surface temperature at the time of those migrations. And so what they found is there is a statistically significant difference and change in population migration based on climate change. Now, the data may not seem like it's that much. Their data said it was 0.6 days per decade that spring migration was happening earlier. And it was affecting the spring migration more than it was affecting the autumn migration. So early indications and research that's finally coming out as we sift through all of this data and look at the backlog of data we have indicates that there is some impact on bird migrations, although to you and I, 0.6 days every 10 years doesn't seem like a lot. So now let's take it back to your backyards. All you have to do is look out your windows. If you can, go explore your backyard. Even better, take a walk around your neighborhood. What do you see? What do you hear? Who do you see scrambling on the ground? Hiding in the bushes? Perched in a tree? Or flying up in the sky? If you need help identifying what you're seeing, the Audubon Field Guides are available online and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology has their All About Birds website. And if you need help dialing it in even further because you're really unsure, Cornell Lab of Ornithology's Merlin Bird ID app can help you narrow it down. So thank you all for joining us for this week's Take Action Citizen Science Challenge. We can't wait to see what you are all finding in the world around you.